If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you gonna scare them off to? Hell number two? Or are you just gonna sit there and let them burn? These things are very real. They're happening out there, people. Um, especially when we go back to the original topic is the uh, satanic ritual abuse. We had a, a sh there's a show on HBO, uh, the first season, and True Detective, it covered this aspect, I guess, from a true story. Uh, so you got to realize, people, again, that this is real. So I want to, since we're at the, we're, we're almost, we have, I think we have 42 minutes left. So I want to segue back into the Hollywood perspective of all this. And I'm going to start with what Greg Reed said in the DVD about um, he was possibly being groomed for Hollywood. You guys want to touch on that? I know you know him personally. Yeah. yeah um, oh, okay, go ahead, Tom. Well, I, you know, here's the thing. We hear a lot of stories, and there's no shortage of uh, videos on YouTube that you can go in and type and find out about pedophilia in Hollywood and that sort of thing. And uh, I'll give you something to look up real quick uh, for anybody listening out there. If it's still available, I think the transcript is still available, is you can find this um, conservative radio uh, talk show radio host out of the Chicago area whose name is Man Cow. And he was on the Alex Jones show. This yeah, was years ago. And he told of an experience where he went to Hollywood and he got an invitation to a private party and it was really weird and he had to go down and he had to get dropped off by a limo and there was a secret way there. And he showed up and he thought he was lost, but he was actually at the place and he went into this satanic party and he gives the he he says there was a woman there that was supposed to seduce him that looked you know looked very similar to his wife and he he just wow. talked about all kinds of bizarre things there but this is an example and um again his name is man cow it's kind of a weird name i don't know if anybody's ever yeah. heard of him he, uh, he's kind of like his, a, i think that was his it wasn't that his uh, stage name or his show because he had he had a show um he had a show i, I remember it seeing him on the, um, he had a radio show, not only out of Chicago, but it was all across the United States at one. And, um, but, you know, those uh, Satanists, those elite would love to try and uh, to bring, you know, to get a hold of a guy like that and recruit him. And he believes that's what they were trying to do at that party. So, yeah, um, I mentioned that to Greg in, in the film when I was interviewing, you know, I, you know, after I read his book, I kind of thought that maybe they were trying to recruit him just because of where he was, the proximity to Hollywood. I mean, maybe it's a long shot. I don't know, but I just kind of threw that out there because the reason I said that is because Greg wasn't the sacrifice. He was the one doing the sacrifice and he was the one that they were training to do that. So they have purposes for everybody and they look for, you know, they look for a certain profile of a person, you know, when they're looking for a, uh, when they're looking for a, a crazy shooter, they always look for a, um, somebody who's had military experience, but they have no father and a strong mother, uh, and usually a mother that hates men. And that's like the recipe, uh, for a, uh, for a lone gunman. So, you yeah. know, the, the Hollywood aspect, um, there's, there's just, uh, too much uh i don't want to say it's evidence but there's just too there's too many stories out there of these guys being involved in this crazy stuff and well, uh, yeah and to elaborate on what tom said about greg you know birthdays uh actual dates they have a lot of significance within the way well, it kind of depends on the flavor of the occult that you're in for instance greg was kind of being brought up in sort of a weird mix. Yeah, I think he even mentions it in the uh, the film, a weird mix of, like, druidism and, and black magic. You know, that's, that's not the same across the board for everybody. You know, he was kind of, you know, even the occult has denominations, so to speak, in the same way that mo most Christians understand denominations. You've got different flavors. Well, it being there was a druid sort of uh, nature to the, the group that he was being brought up in, what people need to understand is Greg was born on February the 15th, which is the, the day that they celebrate the feast to the Roman god Lupercus and like the mm. wolf god. And so what, what you see is 
sort of a grooming that was quite possibly that he was actually he was chosen quite possibly because of his birthday. Having been born on that day is very uh, spiritually significant. Um, you know, on top of that, though, there are elements of Greg's history with his family that will be lost forever. You know, there seems to be some clues that his grandmother knew far more than she ever let on, and when Greg pressed her to find out what she knew that, what kind of secret she knew that had been buried, she reacted very aggressively, you know, very uh, verbally aggressively back, you know, and as soon as, he began, as soon as he began questioning his own grandmother, you know, just asking, just just asking if they could open up that can of worms, you know, is there anything I, sh- you know, pretty much, is there anything I should know about this family that's, 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 you know, not common knowledge? I'm paraphrasing his own words. You know, it wasn't long after he began asking those questions that she, she had a breakdown and she mentally checked out. It, it, she became, I think she actually jumped out of a car. Oh, man, I hope I'm not butchering that story, but she, do you remember him saying that the other day, Tom? He, she, she bailed out of the car. I don't remember driving. that. I don't remember um, that, but yeah, maybe that might have been where I was going. Yeah, I, I think she she tried yeah. to get out while it was moving, or she did get out. She kind of almost sort of like didn't know where she was, and it just she just went downhill from there. She she didn't she died not too long after, and it, it kind of made me wonder, you know, as I was talking to Greg, if she form of programming, maybe 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 not. I, I, we don't know. I, that, that kind of, you know, kind of, at least whatever whatever the memories were that brought up where her demeanor changed, it seemed to have affected her so deeply that um, she wasn't she wasn't right after drudging that up again, and she ended up passing away not long after. So, you know, with Greg, not only his birthday, but some of the clues that there were people in his family that knew more than led on to, I don't know that we're ever really going to know the full story on why he was being groomed, but I guess my overall point is, Look at birthdays too; they're very, very significant and important. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, um, I'm glad you went into that because the next couple of uh, things I'm going to mention uh, are, 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 ties right into that. Um, you have Eyes Wide Shut, that movie. We yeah. touched on the mansion part a, a, a little bit, and then you have Rosemary's Baby, which is basically the birth of the Antichrist, and it has so many different links to real-life occultists and everything like that, and I don't want to get too much into that. But let's go, uh, you have this movie, the TV show, sorry, Legion, that just came out this year. And I watched the whole season, and I'm like, wait a minute. It didn't, it didn't hit me at first, Legion. I said, wait a minute, isn't that the name of the demon in the Bible? So I went and looked it up, and then I went to look up the character. I'm like, oh, wow. Basically, all they did was translate that into a character that has all these personalities, and he's a, um, what they would call an omega-level mutant, and he astral projects. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff in this, in this TV show. Um, but basically, he's like a god. And um, he has this, this they call, in the movie they call it a parasite, that has been with him since he was a child. And I'm going to lead into some other stuff when I say this. Um, and this thing is inside of him with his other personalities, and um, it's so connected to him that if they try to push it out by, by their own means, they will kill him. Um, it, it, things, things eventually happen in the show, but that's one aspect, right? And then we have, you mentioned earlier the movie Split. I watched it last night. <laughs> and I, I didn't even realize that this was the birth of a, of a villain, uh, a, a comic book villain you know, because it's connected to Unbreakable um, by M. Night Shyamalama Ding Dong, whatever his name is, right? And same thing here. You have this dark creature that has been, that's been connected to this guy, um, and it doesn't manifest till later, um, and it's actually superhuman, a super soldier. And we'll get into that in, in, in a couple seconds. Um, but all of this is just connecting to what you guys are presenting in the, in the, in the movie, and and before I go into uh, the last part, um, actually two more parts to go into, we have, I watched this, this full two-hour documentaries on magicians. And what I found compelling is the same thing. Some of these magicians had this spirit with them since they were a child. And that's the spirit that's obviously working through them to do these magic tricks 
Um, and and um, what's what's one of them? The Dynamo. Dynamo is one of them. And you'll see this reoccurring. Yeah. From they were a child. From they were a child. From they were a child. In the comic books, books everywhere. And, and and wait before you go, Rory. Um, one more thing before I get into the super soldier aspect is what you'll see manifest in in these comic book movies is a lot of the, 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 the comic book heroes that aren't demigods, the way their powers manifest is through trauma. They have to get angry or beat up or something, Slow. and it's still paralleling with the whole conversation. I know I just gave you guys a bunch, but I, I, I just didn't want to take up too much time. Go ahead. Well, all right. Well, I was just um, like what you said, uh, Hulk with the rage, um, some of these different things uh, that are that are um, that we see, just these reoccurring themes that are happening all across the board. What Chris talked about the magicians, when we started studying it, it got so dark, I just left it alone because it's evident, it's very evident there that there is a force that's behind it. So I said yes, it's just flat. I I knew immediately that it was demonic. Um, I, I saw one where um, a Britain got talent or America, uh, one, of, one of those shows, one of those uh, um, so-called idol shows where, where this guy, he comes out and he says, hey, so what are you going to do today? And the guy says, well, I'm going to introduce you guys to my friend, my invisible friend. And, and this is the way the show is going on. I'm just, I'm just trying to uh, solidify what, what Chris was talking about. But this guy went and did a trick or, or something on stage, and everybody in the audience, they were shocked. But I knew immediately, I said, that's demonic. You know, and what we see these same themes that now it's, it's becoming mainstream. People are picking it up and, and running with it and, and saying, well, no, it's okay, you know. The Bible says, "Warn to those who call evil good and good evil," and they're they're saying, "No, it's 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 okay. We embrace this. No, we not. We need to repel it in the name of Jesus Christ." If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.